All right, it's uh, April 5th, 2013. We are uh, at the lovely Jupiter Hotel in Portland, Oregon. Possibly my favorite hotel, the Doug Fur Bar. It's an old motor inn, refurbished. It's fucking beautiful. We taped the DVD last night. I think it went well. I don't know how they're going to edit between the uh, early uh, mumbling uh, pseudo-drunk me and the late-night confident coked-up-and-drunk me, but that's their problem. And we're here with uh, Goose Kirk. I met uh, probably 90... Boy, years ago. Yeah, yeah it was in the 90s, a long fucking time ago. And uh, we did some mushrooms together at Dante's, and... Uh, the next thing I know, he moved to Colombia, gave up his life, and just uh, embarked on a journey. We were going to go down to visit him. Uh, we changed our plans because we had to go to a wedding in Costa Rica. And you, ended you went in, to prison in Brazil. Up in, <laughs> up in jail. <laughs> wound up in jail. Well, actually, let me preface this. You had a little bit of fame, uh, uh, morning radio fame, uh, years before that, where it, uh, he made the news because his friends... Uh, played a practical joke on him. Right. They covered my entire apartment in foil. Aluminum foil. Everything. 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 Every piece of change in his change dish. The toilet paper. Uh, toothbrushes. Every every piece of silverware. Yeah. Every dish. Every single thing in his apartment they covered in tin foil. It was amazing, yeah. And Five that, days they, they spent. Yeah. <laughs> And that, that made national news, like news of the weird kind of shit. You yep. had morning radio guys calling you. World news, yeah, all over the world. So, yeah, that was his first claim to fame. Yeah. <laughs> Cut to, I'm picturing you on some bamboo raft going down the Amazon <laughs> with a giant uh, uh, bundle of, tell us how it started. How, how the whole trip started, you mean? No, just How'd you end up in a Brazilian <laughs> prison for four years? <laughs> well, um... Well, you know, I, I moved down there um, just to kind of change my life up. You know, I was bored at work, sick of America, wanted out. And Colombia is just a beautiful place. It's amazing. And the, the, the girls are, are incredibly hot. Um, yeah, now you were posting so, on my message board from being down there, and you'd occasionally post pictures of whores that you had bedded, <laughs> if I'm not wrong. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'd keep up with your, your journeys until you disappeared. All my weird adventures, yeah. Yeah, you were living like hand-to-mouth, pesos a day. Yep, yep. So just like some teenage backpacker, only at this point you were 32? 35. 35? Yeah, 35, 36. All right. Yeah. yeah, and so at some point, you know, you, you, you realize I should be making some money somehow. And in Colombia, you're not going to make much money. It's, uh, it's tough. So what did you do that that was legal before you got into trouble? Did you do anything? Oh yeah, I was trying all kinds of things. I tried to start up a company to export bags and jackets and things. Started a magazine. Uh, did all kinds of things, and just nothing ever worked. <laughs> so what was your magazine? <laughs> it was in English, actually. Um, it just a what's going on kind of kind of thing. All right. Free magazine. All right. Um, so yeah. you got sick of beans and rice. Mm -hmm. And yeah, eventually you and just realize. Then you, know, then you met some uh, smooth talking Swede at a Hilton bar. I'm guessing. I don't know. I watched Locked Up Abroad too much. <laughs> <laughs> but that's usually how it starts, yeah. All right. So usually you, you just meet somebody in a bar or a club or something and get to talking. And, and you have a few cocktails and go, what the hell? Right. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> I won't be like those other guys. <laughs> what could go wrong? Yeah. yeah. So, um, so was this your first uh, smuggling trip? That you got busted on? Uh, no, no, it wasn't actually. All right. um, it, it, it's a it's a really interesting world, actually. The uh, I know. I'm waiting for you to tell us uh, about it. <laughs> <laughs> so you okay? You you meet someone, they get you involved. Tell right. us about the first time you you went on a a run, a mission, a, a mission gauntlet. <laughs> it's actually um it's surprisingly easy. Um, we figure that roughly about ninety per 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 percent of the trips work. At least. You know, some guys out there have 100%. They never lose anybody. Um, there's so much of it going on, you can't even okay, imagine. Okay, so tell us about the first trip. My first trip? Yeah. yeah. I went to uh, down the Amazon. Get him a shot. What do you want a shot of? We've got to loosen his tongue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I don't do shots, really. 
I don't really do shots either. Yeah. All right, forget the shots. Yeah, forget the shots. All right. It seemed funny at the time. Okay, so your first trip, you have to go from where to where? I went down the Amazon uh, through From Brazil. Colombia? Yeah. From through Colombia, Brazil? Through Brazil and into Europe. Always Europe. Wait, you actually went all the way to Europe? Oh, yeah. Oh, you oh, did yeah. the whole, you didn't just pass it off? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's no, great. Way, yeah. yeah. And it's, um, like I said, it's, it's, it's surprisingly easy as long as you kind of know what you're doing. So is that bamboo raft that I'm picturing, Ricky Ticky Tavi kind of shit? Is that anywhere? That actually, that happens, yeah. And like yeah. some long boat? The, the Amazon. With a straw hat? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> it's actually true, yeah. And what did you have? We're talking about your first uh, smuggling mission. Cocaine, yeah. Coke. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and you brought it to where in Europe? You don't want to say? It, it, you don't have to answer. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think any of this can get you in trouble now. I hope not. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> that's why. But yeah, into in, in, in Holland, Amsterdam. All right. But that's usually the, the, the place where everything goes. All right. Usually. Or Spain. Okay. And so what, what did you make? Five grand. Five grand. Yeah. Which isn't much, but it's, it, uh, it's a start. For Colombia. Yeah. 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 That's kind of standard. Like one... Kilo is like five grand for the mule, and then things kind of advanced from there. You know, and all right. Worked up. So, uh, 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 any close calls? Oh man, lots. Yeah, How, <laughs> plenty uh, of uh, times. Uh, 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 give me some detail. You're going down the Amazon. How long does that take? You're in a non-motorized boat. No, it, it's motorized. Yeah. All right. Yeah, but um, you go down the Amazon. I took like a week or two, just to make it look like I'm. Tourist, right? All right. You, know, you got to make it look right. Yeah, yeah. You know. But yeah, close calls. There was one time I was on a train in Europe, and uh, and I actually have I have the stuff on me. Like it's it's packed in uh, Is it Midnight Express taped not, to your chest, not on the body. It's like it, sewn into my jacket and right. my boots and things. And you can smell it. It doesn't smell like cocaine. They they put like this anti dog kind of scent on yeah. it. It's got a very powerful like eucalyptus kind of smell. Um, it just smells weird. It doesn't smell like aftershave exactly, but it's, it's, it's a weird smell. Did you have to wear fake dreadlocks to pass off yeah. the stink? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of um, tie-dye. So what, I was on this train, and I had the stuff on me, and the train stops at a border, and they brought dogs on the train, which I wasn't expecting. I thought, you know, you know Europe is all open. You think there's nothing. Yeah. No. no, they brought dogs on the train. So I got off the train to have a smoke. And I'm actually standing with some other guys who are having smokes. And here comes this dog right behind me inside the train, like standing there just looking at me, you know, <laughs> tongue out. I'm just like, oh, I think I'll stand over here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no problem. So how many, how many trips do you, did you make roughly before the, the fatal? Several trips, yeah. All right. That way. Um, and there were times like where... There was one time I got stopped in an airport, and the cops came up to me, asked for, for, for my ID. They said, can, can you come with us? I said, sure. Went into, into the back room, and I had my, my bag, and I had an external hard drive that was very big. The case was huge. It was yeah. heavy. So they were really interested in that. And I'm standing there. I got the stuff on me, <laughs> right? And they're going through my bag, and like looking at this hard drive, and they're so suspicious of this hard drive. <laughs> 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 I'm like, Okay. And she says, oh, can we go through the x-ray again? I said, sure. And she just passes the, the hard drive in the bag through the x-ray again. And she says, okay, you're, you're okay. That's uh, your great. <laughs> <laughs> but is it like one of those adrenaline rushes where you're like, fuck yes, Oh I man, won. Yeah. It's the, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, you won. And that's how it feels. It's like a Vegas time. feeling. It's, it, definitely. It's a <laughs> Vegas thing. <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot your coat. <laughs> I'm not, not going to lie. It is a lot of fun. It really is. It really, it's, it's, it's great. Especially when um, you get that child porn on the hard drive to make side money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's cut to the, uh, the one that went awry. Where are you? You're I was in a actually, hotel. It's humid. It's like 88 degrees. Your heart's pounding. I had a flight going from Argentina to Brazil to Portugal to Belgium. Which Doesn't look suspicious at all. Yeah, exactly. What, no, exactly. that's just southwest. Yeah. <laughs> but this is this is a terrible flight to have because nobody takes this kind of flight. There's, there's like direct flights from Argentina to Spain or whatever. Yeah. Nobody takes Argentina. But it's a stupid flight. And the guy who was buying the uh, flights, I, I told him again and again, not Brazil. This is the flight I, I want. Yeah. Get this flight. And he calls me up. Oh, here's your flights. 
it's Argentina, Brazil, Portugal. I'm, what are you You're doing? Like, that's, fuck that's you, Expedia, flight. click. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not my flight. You know, try again, yeah. what, the way I told you. Yeah. And, oh, okay, I'm sorry. You know, and the guy calls me up days later. He says, okay, um, you know, I didn't have enough money to buy a new flight. I just had to change the old one. So you, you, Now, of course, at this time, you're not in charge of this, so you kind of have to do whatever the fuck they say, I'm assuming. Well, no. You're, no, you're, I, I, you're free free agent? Yeah, yeah. There's not I some guy that's going to break your legs if it doesn't show no, up no, on time? No, no, right. Yeah. But I, I just didn't have enough money, really. I, I, I just put everything I had into this, and I, I just didn't have enough cash to buy my own flights. All right. Um, so I was dependent on this guy to just do what I told him, and he just didn't. So, <laughs> so you go from Argentina to Brazil. And I knew it was a bad idea. You get this, you, you really have your instincts will, will tell you something's wrong. Yeah. And, and this was my alarm bells were going off even before the flight started. I'm like, yeah, this and this is, is not just idea. the alarm bells you get when you're bringing a crazy chick back to the hotel room. This yeah. Is, this, is, this, is, <laughs> this is a little bit <laughs> more All right, serious. I know this is going to go poorly, but I, I'll wait till after I come to <laughs> sort it out. I actually had this girl I met in Argentina who was telling me, oh, of course I couldn't tell her what I was doing. Uh, so I just told her, oh, I have to go to back to Colombia and do you, some things. You sell used cars? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> call back from a story that won't air. <laughs> <laughs> so this girl's telling me, why, why do you have to leave? Why don't you just stay here with me? I've got this great apartment and you can stay and live. I'll get you a job, you know, te- 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 teaching English. I'm just thinking, as I'm walking to the airport going, I should just stay. <laughs> just forget this stuff and just stay with this girl or something <laughs> no <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if the, it's being picked up but there's a, there's an ominous train sound in the background that kind of gives this a bit of a uh, ambiance kind of, kind of a hobo vibe yeah, yeah that's great. all right so she drops you off at the airport yeah and she thinks you're doing what i'm just going back to columbia all right so i knew it's a terrible idea i just I, this is gonna go terribly wrong but you know in my entire life i've always gotten out of everything i've never gotten in trouble for anything ever i've never been arrested I've never i've never done that yeah i've always gotten out of everything so i'm thinking this is gonna go bad but somehow it'll work okay <laughs> so when it when, it, when i got to uh to to brazil the cops are actually waiting is it sao paulo yeah, San Paulo. Uh, cops are waiting? The cops are waiting. Oh. And, and I'm thinking I'm just changing planes here. You know, it shouldn't be a problem, I don't think. But no, the cops are there waiting. They're <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Um, so do you have the shit on you or is it in your luggage? No, the baggage, yeah. All right. Yeah. So they've found it in your bags or your travel agent tipped them off? No, it's that, that route. The cops, they arrested me. They said, didn't you know that that's a drug route? And, Nobody flies that flight except for drug smugglers, you know? Like, and I'm like, yeah, I kind of had that suspicion. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I can imagine I was, you being very cool with them. Like, all right, you, you got me. Yeah, that's, a, but that's what you have to yeah. do, you know? You just, you know, the cops you always want to. try the that's not my bag or. Oh, God, no. It's like, what are you going to, you know? The are guys who try that, and it just never works. It, it's yeah, stupid, really. So I'm just there. The cops are waiting for me. They ask for. For my ID, I say sure. Here's my passport, and I'm just kind of waiting for the shooter to kind of drop. And they are they cool or are they pricks? No, they're cool. They're just All like, right. oh, see, here's your passport, and are you, you know, where, where are you going? Blah blah blah. Okay, I'm just, and then they let me go. So I'm in the airport, just going, uh, this this is very ominous, you know. <laughs> like they didn't ask anybody else in in line for their passports or talk to them. They just talked to me, and I'm like, oh, this isn't going to go well. I spent like an hour or two in the airport, actually. And then finally, they came up to me and said, oh, can you come, come with us? I said, sure. Oh, you're just sitting there having a drink, and they go, oh, yeah, yep. f- we forgot to arrest you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, <laughs> we no, by the that, ID part, we forgot the arresting thing. Yeah. And by that point, they had scanned my baggage you know, and everything, and they determined that, yeah, there's something in there that shouldn't be there. And, All right. And so they bring you in a back room. Yep. <laughs> kind of did it out in the open as well. The people walking by. <laughs> Hi, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Hey, want a bump? Yeah, exactly. Anyone? Last call. <laughs> <laughs> so fire sale <laughs> so you, you get back to the, the to the back room and they have to weigh everything they have to test it and make sure you know yeah, they have to test it yeah, yeah. we all know well, it's all night happen. long but the cops are actually nice about it they, they, they were cool and they asked me you know to to talk and to tell them what happened i'm like no you know here's me here's the drugs what more do you want you know like now are you I, freaking out or are you just like ah oh, fuck it here's another adventure yeah, kind of like, oh, fuck it, here's another adventure. Um, and I still kind of thought, this is going to work out. I'm gonna, there's going to be a way kind of around this. Um, but no. No. <laughs> no. 
So they haul you off immediately to where? This is what I hate about Locked Up Abroad. It's all the, uh, the sweating uh, leading up to... They never show you Locked Up Abroad. They yeah. get to where they get busted, and then they go, oh, they spent five years in jail. Tell me about five years in jail. Yeah, That's exactly. what Midnight Express was. That was the good part. Yep. <laughs> it's only 10 minutes of him taping hash to his chest. The rest is the fun part in jail. Yeah. So, so you, they take you where? First, I spent a day in the airport. They have a little holding cell there. Yeah. And then they took me to a, a prison, but like a special holding cell in the prison. And that was actually the worst part. All right. Because you're in a tiny little cell with like six guys. And there's no air. And it's just, it, it's just awful. And you don't speak the language? Did uh, you at that point? I speak Spanish, so you know that it's, they, it's very they, close. They to do Portuguese. Portuguese, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so we, I was in this terrible, tiny cell for like a week, and you you don't leave that little little room. <laughs> it's just nasty. Was it uh, yeah. the America's Best Inn in Bloomington, Indiana? <laughs> so. Almost as bad. Yeah, <laughs> almost, almost as bad. As bad. <laughs> 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 and then from there, um, because San Paulo has this uh, special jail that's. Foreigners only. Yeah. Um, because Brazil had a problem in years past with foreigners being killed. You know? Oh, yeah. Once you, yeah. Once we heard you were locked up down there, we started Googling and we're like, oh, he's oh, yeah. fucked. Oh, it's bad. Oh, yeah. he's <laughs> fucked. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. So that's how it used to be in Brazil. It, it, it was terrible. Um, so the, the consulates from, from Europe, especially, kind of got together and, and basically kind of forced Brazil to, to, to make a special jail for foreigners only. That's where I went next, after like a week in this holding cell. And that special jail, it's built for 800 guys, and yeah. it holds twice that. So there's like 1,600 guys from all over the world, every country you can think of. 80% um, of those guys are there drugs. For drugs. Yeah. What do the other 20% do? Yeah, you got like 15% are just like thieves, like right. just douchebags, you know, like especially the... In, in San Paulo, you get guys who steal your bags out of the airport. Like, there's tons of these guys. I don't know what the hell. <laughs> um, but 80%, yeah, drugs. Um, All right, so this is where you're going to spend the next three years and nine months. Right. So you get there. Like, when, do you, when do you go to court? Oh, in Brazil, that's a, that's a big question. Um, right, well, what was yeah. your first court date after your arrest? In every other country in the world, I've learned this, when you get arrested, within, like, Two or three days, you'll see a judge. Yeah. And the judge will determine if they want to go forward with this case, blah, blah, right. blah. Brazil, they're supposed to. They just don't. <laughs> so <laughs> your court date could be anywhere between six months and two years, the first time you, you go to Jesus. court. Jesus. What was yours? And mine, I, I got lucky. Mine was six months. Pretty good. All right. For, for <laughs> San Paulo. There's guys who spend two years there. Now, do you just have some flunky, uh, uh, deadbeat uh, lawyer guy? Yeah, court appointed, appointed lawyer. Did he speak English? No. No? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. No. <laughs> and, and what was great... <laughs> you draw, you're just drawing symbols in the sand. Uh, yeah. He <laughs> <laughs> draws a noose. You should have a mic. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I, I, I got to court, and uh, they had a... a translator there but the translator was like a deer caught in the headlights the guy like had obviously like taken some english classes at one point <laughs> and really couldn't speak english really and and i i loved it i thought this is perfect you know great i don't want to ask questions don't ask me anything it's better i just don't want to speak really so so <laughs> so the judge would ask questions and by that point six months in the jail i already you pretty much understood some? portuguese I, I knew what, what she was saying right. um so the judge would ask questions, the translator would try to translate it, and then I would speak back. And I would try to speak slowly at first yeah. and, and carefully, but then I realized he couldn't speak English. So I'm, I'm just speaking quickly. I'm just, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy would just look at me, uh, you know, just frozen. <laughs> and the judge got so angry. At the translator? At the translator, yeah. She, at, one point, at one point, she asked a question. The translator translated it pretty well, actually. Yeah. I mean, he said it right. And the judge, she spoke a little bit of English, and she thought she spoke English pretty better well, than she, apparently. Better than she did? Yeah. <laughs> so the translator translates a question. The judge goes, no, that's not what I said. You need to be exactly, you know, translating perfectly. This is a court of law. We need to do this correctly, blah, blah, blah. Say it right. And the guy's <laughs> looking at her like, um. <laughs> 
And he says the same thing to me, but just changes a few words around. The judge goes, okay, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> so you're pleading and, guilty. Oh, yeah. You, you so have to. In really Brazil, you yeah. have to plead guilty. There, right. Nobody gets off. You plead not guilty, they, they fuck you. Right. Even if you're innocent, they don't yeah. care. They just, they, they just screw you. Um, and they don't have a fondness for Americans. Not really. No. no. They really don't. Because when I was trying to book, we did book a flight down to go see you. And then we realized, yeah, then we realized, oh, shit, you probably need a visa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to get a visa, and that's a big pain in the ass. You have to go to an embassy or some shit. That's four hours away. I fuck Goose Kirk. We'll see him when he gets home. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was, I realized in time to cancel the tickets. But, uh, yeah, we were looking forward to it. But they said it's because we fuck with them when they're trying to visit yeah. the U.S. so bad that it's just you know, basically a exactly. big fuck you to us, which I understand. Yep. So, all right, so you you get into jail. What's the name of the j- jail, prison that you're in? Itai. Itai. That, that's the name of the town, actually. The prison has some long, idiotic name. Yeah, I, I remember name. looking it up. Yeah. And I, you know, I don't even know, I'm even not know even going to try to pronounce that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so you get in there, and you put in a cell. Do you have a cellmate? Cellmate? Yeah. What they do is when you get into the prison, they put you into uh, what's called inclusion first, which is a kind of a special cells they have like three of these cells that are kind of big and really just empty and they put you there for like a week or two just to kind of make sure you're okay you're not you're know, gonna crazy hang or yourself you're not gonna, yeah just to yeah. see how you are and kind of get you used to the environment and after that then they move you into the n- normal cells all right um, and that's where you met morgan freeman and started planning your escape yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> sorry that's shawshank redemption <laughs> Oh, All right, so so after you get uh, you know picked last for kickball, where do they put you? Yeah. Who's your cellmate? What's funny is that um, when it, when I was in the the first jail in the Brazilian jail, yeah, people are talking like, oh, you going to the special foreigners jail? It's great. It's much better than this place. They've got a football. You field. get stabbed way less. Way than that less. One. Yeah, you know, <laughs> they got a library and it's oh, it's it, it, there's a pool or something. You know, like it's great. You know, yeah. um, and so. I got to the inclusion cell in there, and that's just yeah, it's just terrible. It's just nasty, dirty. You know, there's nothing in there. It's just empty concrete. Um, shit in a hole. Yeah, you shit in a Sh- hole. Yeah, there's not even a toilet. It's yeah, just that, a, that's that's why I don't even travel. Not pr- much less prison. Like just any country. That I was up to do this thing for PBS, d- talking to comedians in India and uh, Nigeria, and then we should watch out. Uh, an idiot abroad and he's having a shit in holes and I'm like no fucking way yeah, am I shit yeah, exactly. squatting exactly. over a hole but you had no choice you toilet paper like these are the first no. things that come to my mind you, of course you go over hey did you get raped is of course your first question right. and we'll get to that one <laughs> <laughs> but the like the horror would be no toilet paper no toilet paper yeah yeah but inside the prison you know the prison doesn't really have m- much rules um but the prisoners themselves have a, have kind of an extensive list of rules that you you have to, to, to follow. It's kind of a prison culture, all right. You know, so one of the most important rules, when you, what you learn is, if you shit, you got to shower. All right. Immediately, you, if you take a shit, you go shower. Just all right. Done. Well, you know? that's good. At least you have a shower. That would yeah. Yeah. Just the thought of sitting around with a fucking nasty <laughs> shit riddled yeah, ass exactly. on top of being in prison. Yep. The Did someone are, have to tell you that? Yeah, yeah. People, people get they sit you down. No, you got to do this. You're, you're, do this, you're you know? sitting down on the bench and leaving big brown football stains, and they're like, "Don't you know? <laughs> Don't you know there's a shower that's yeah. free?" <laughs> Animal. <laughs> We only have two mics, so uh, when Andy and uh, Chaley chime in with their funny, I'm just repeating it. You're saying? So the showers are freezing ass cold, and and San Paulo gets freezing as well. It's very cold there, so it's not... It's not like a nice warm shower yeah. after you, you know. It's, it's just the, you just spread your cheeks tough. and bend yeah. into it and hope the water doesn't hit the rest of your body. Yeah. 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 Well, the good thing about the cold shower, it reduces your obvious erection as you walk yeah, around the right. yard. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Open air showers? No, actually, inside this, the cells, um, the, 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 each cell was built for for six guys. Um, so you've got six bunks, you've got some shelves, and in the back you've got a shower and. Oh, okay. like an actual oh, okay. toilet. All right, it's all in, in your cell. Yeah. 
it, so if it's built for six guys, does that mean there's twelve in there because they're double capacity? Sometimes there were there were twelve. Yeah. All right. So when you had to sleep with Andy last night, it was no big deal. Yeah, I'm used to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So you walk in the cell the first day. Who do you look at? No, actually, I walked into the cell block first. They yeah. Put you in the in the block, which is the cell block is this kind of U shaped, two story like kind of open air kind of thing. It looks like a, like an apocalyptic. Motel Six. All right, it's just, it's just concrete walls. It just looks like terrible. It's like laundry hanging. It's all concrete and dirty. It's like oh, gee. And I'm I, picturing you walking in there in that jacket with two bags, like yeah. <laughs> like some wayward traveler. <laughs> Where's my room? Yeah. Where? <laughs> So I just walk in. I'm like, oh, this is not what. There's, there's no library here. There's no pool. Like, what, is, what is this? What, there's, no, there's no football field. What, I was lied to. <laughs> and a guy walks up to me. I'm and he, giving you one star on Yelp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a, a guy walks up to me and he goes, oh, you must be the American. This word travels fast. You know, right. in, the, in the prison. You got nothing else to do but stand around and gossip and hear what's going on. So that's everybody knows everything. All right, so you're the American. So I show up and everybody knows who I am already. Like you're, you're the American, <laughs> you know. And this guy walks up and he, he's um, he's American as well, and he says, "Don't worry about a thing. This cell block is is really cool. Nothing happens here. It's all quiet. You have no problems here. Um, I'll help you out with anything you need. Let me know. And every, don't, don't worry. Everything's fine here." And then I'm like, okay, great. That's that. I feel better. And then that night they had a riot. <laughs> <laughs> Over. <laughs> they just had a riot about one of the guards was being a prick, and right. they took some guys to Castigo, which is the solitary block. All right. And they shouldn't. Have so done what's it. what's a riot entail? But Burning rolls of toilet paper. Or there's stabbings. Well, or the yeah. mattresses. Well, here's the thing. You know, I. Pressed up against the bars and I, I didn't carving know, I, I, snitch into someone's head. Yeah, <laughs> right, well, in three different languages. Here's, here's the great part: I didn't know anything was going on until, you know, they 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 open the cell doors like in the morning and the afternoon, and they they they, they lock the cell doors at uh, four o'clock in the afternoon, and then you're locked in all night. Um, and I didn't know anything was going on, and then like about six o'clock in the evening. Everybody's locked inside their cells, and they just start this riot inside the cells. Like they're just pounding on the doors and hammering on the doors. They're burning things and throwing them out. And you're and this is your first night, and yeah. so you're in a room with five other guys. I'm assuming we had uh, eight guys. In eight cell. guys yeah. in 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 six beds. Yeah. So you had to buddy up, sleep on the floor. Oh, all right. Yeah. But I'm just like, there's this riot happening, and I'm like, oh, this is great. This is my first night in prison. Like, <laughs> yeah, this should, there should be a riot. But then I'm realizing. Everybody's locked in their cells. This isn't fun at all. Like, what, what's the point of this? <laughs> and at one point, I, I went and banged on the door as well, and I, I yelled, Attica, Attica. You know? <laughs> yeah, you, then I realized nobody in this prison knows. That, yeah. Oh, that, that would be the second worst to no toilet paper is no one getting the no one reference. Gets it, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, come on, Attica, anyone? Anyone? Thought yeah. that's universal. Give it, give it yeah, no. <laughs> so, so who were the people that you're uh, immediately celled up with? So, Anyone that speaks English? Yeah, actually, most guys spoke English. Um, in fact, the majority of the guys in the jail, like the largest numbers of the guys in jail were uh, from Africa. Nigerians especially, right. number one. They all speak English. Good, yeah. they all belong in fucking jail. <laughs> Goddamn spammers. <laughs> Hang them all. So, so, so did you make a friend? I yeah, so in, in, in my cell, anyway... Um, I had a guy from England, very, very cool guy, um, guys from Africa, guys from South America, uh, we, we, nice mix. I, if I'm all over the map, that's just how my head works, but do you keep in touch with anyone? Like, uh, is there anyone now that you get out of you like, fuck all you? Yeah, there, 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 there's a few guys I'm still in touch uh, with. Uh, all right. Oddly enough, the guys that- You're not like me, where you're like, oh, Goose Kirk's in prison, I should write him. Five years later, oh, here he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was gonna- <laughs> Okay, so back to the riot. Riot subsides at some point. Yeah, riot subsides. They cut off the water and the power, you know, just to keep everybody calm. And yeah, I, I was just, I was let down again. I'm like, that's not even a good riot, you know? Come on. All right, um, so you settle in. Settle in. I changed cells um, after a week or so um, because the American guy said, hey, you should come to my cell. It's great. 
And I realized that, that... And they uh, have the power to just do that? Yeah. You just trade players, just like Major League Baseball? Yeah, and it's a big right. deal. Yeah, it's a big thing, you know. And Again, the, the prison rules are very strict. So, like, you have to wait to have a bed. You, 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 if you're new, you come in, you're on the floor. And then you, you go, like, in order. When the guys leave, then you get the, the bed, right. you know. And there's no bullying. There's no option. You, know, you, you, can, right. you can buy a bed, you know, if you're quiet about it, you know, but right. it's, it's very strict. So when you want to change cells, it's politics. You know, you got to calculate, okay, am I in the bed? Do I change bed for bed? You know, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> it's very complicated. All right. So now you're with the American. So I'm with the American guy. The American Is he guy, still there? No. No, he's, he was a Lebanese American. Oh, yeah. And so I'm in the cell with four other guys. All right. Where is he now? You just, when I said, is he still there? You had a look on your face like he's dead. No, no, he's I fine. You know, I he's... hit gold on this. <laughs> no, he's, he's doing very well, actually. All right. He's back he, in the States or in Middle Lebanon? East, yeah. He's in oh, Middle East. All right. In for drugs? Oh, yeah. 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 All right. Everybody is there. Yeah. You just assume that. <clears throat> the, the guys who are thieves, you don't even talk to. They just say to themselves. So, but new guy comes in, it's like you, you ask him, oh, how much did you have? You know, that's how much did you have? <laughs> yeah, I, I forget to ask. How much did you? How, how much coke did oh, you? Oh, that's have? an interesting thing. That's in Brazil, at least. I'm sure this happens everywhere in the world, but in Brazil, it's a fact uh, that when you get arrested for for drugs, if you have, let's say, five kilos of cocaine, when you go to court, you'll have half that. All right. On your paperwork, it'll say, "I know I had five, <laughs> but you go to court, <laughs> yo, you had three and a half." <laughs> and right. the, the cops just take yeah. some for them and they, they sell it and sure I'm not going to complain you know it looks right. better for me and it's win win yeah. yeah everybody's happy so you had five kilos yeah all right three and a half three and a half <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh, three and a, well how do you spend three and a half years there what you do know, you do do you smoke cigarettes a lot that would yeah, be that would be my smokes. third thing yeah yeah everybody smokes. Um, what do you, you have money? Do? No. In fact, that, that, yeah, Brazil is terrible like this. Brazil, when they put you in prison, they give you this kind of ratty, like, foam mattress. It's just like a thin foam pad, and that's it. That's what you got. They'll give you, like, a pair of pants, maybe. <laughs> Let you keep some of your clothes if it's not, you know, the, yeah. the real rules they have. Um, that's all they got. So you don't, you don't have sheets. So how do you blankets. get cigarettes? Um, cigarettes, again, a problem. Um Brazil has a law where if you work in the jail, um, you get paid minimum wage, All right. which is like $300 a, a month. All right. um, but in our jail, That's because... more than bingo makes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in our jail, because we're foreigners, they just would fuck us. So we got paid like $20 a month. Oh, shit. Because we're foreigners. Hey, what are you going to do? Yeah. You know, <laughs> Who are you going to call? Who are you complain to? Yeah. yeah. What and was your job? Baker. Oh, oh. Made the bread, so it was great. I got extra bread. There you and, go. Uh, yeah. So, but yeah, it's it's tough to to get money. You gotta you, you know you gotta get a, a sheets and a blanket first of all because it's cold. Oh, okay, so, so that costs you money. No, guys will help you out. Right. They'll, they'll help you out. They got an extra blanket here. Take take take, take this. But yeah, to get you, you you have to buy everything. You got to buy your own soap, your own toothpaste, and razors. Now, and is things. anyone sending you money? Yeah. All right. Family and friends helped out. Yeah, oh, okay. me money. So I, I and was you okay. get it. Yeah. That would, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not easy to, to do it. Who do you call first when oh, you got man. busted? Let me tell you. What's this the is, first phone call you made? This, you know, the, the, when I got arrested, I was in the first jail. The, the consulate came. The American consulate. You're in this prison with guys from all over the world. They look at you as American, and there's only like five of us in the whole jail. Like, yeah. And so everybody goes, oh, America. You know, Wow the superpower, the richest country in the world. When the consulates come to visit the guys, they always bring stuff. They bring you, like, shirts, T-shirts, or, you know, soap and things yeah. that you need. European, All sponsored. Here's a, here's a, a Jaeger Meister coffee mug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. There's some Delta blankets. <laughs> so the consulates will come and they'll bring things. European will, will give their... their their guys money like Spain and Holland these countries will actually give the guys money and help them out um, and so and the it, US guy comes to so you what, when you first get arrested so everybody says oh America the richest country in the world they must like 
hire a lawyer for you. They're going to do everything for you. You're going to get out of here quick in America. Yeah. Um, My consulate came, our consulate, I should say. What's his name? Uh, They change all the time. Oh, yeah. If you don't remember him, we can't just make a prick out of him. Some douche. I don't know. Yeah, some douche. (laughs) So the consulate comes. He doesn't have anything. Um, What the consulate does is they bring our guys. This is, I swear to God, this is true. They, they bring our guys soap and shampoo that they steal out of hotels. <laughs> That's what they bring us. I wasn't, like, I wasn't like, very far off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bolivia, like the poorest country in South America, they bring their guys blankets and shirts and whatever they need. You know, help them. Yeah. America brings... Yeah, here's a Marriott a terry cloth bathrobe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, not even a bathrobe. It's soap and shampoo. And I'm bald. I don't even need shampoo. You, know? <laughs> so, you can use it for lube. Yeah, no, and, and, and the other thing they would do is that the, uh, the, the Marines at the consulate would, or the other people who worked at the consulate would donate things for us. A little bit of food or candy bar or something some, some, sometimes. Somebody donated half a jar of Vaseline. <laughs> Used <laughs> jar of Vaseline. <laughs> Get, get some mileage out of that, so, didn't no, you? No, actually, because, because you, you know, they, they, they I just, I, what I'd do is I'd lube my whole ass crack just so when I shit in a hole, <laughs> <laughs> most of it would run right off. <laughs> and when, when the consoles bring things, it has to be checked by a guard, right? right. And so I, I go to pick up my, my bag of sh- soap and sh- shampoo from the consulate, and there's this jar of Vaseline. And the guard looks at me like, what the hell? And, 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 I didn't order it. I'm like, I, yeah, I don't know. It's my guy. And he opens it up. He's like, this is used Vaseline. And I'm like, look, I, you know, America, I don't know. You know? <laughs> I, can't, I can't explain. Hey, it's, it works different in our prison system. And, yeah. and then the guard says, oh, this isn't allowed. You can't have this. And it's used. That's just weird. <laughs> I know. I know. So your first phone call. All right, so... Um, what I did, the consulate came and they said, do you want us to contact anybody? And I said, yeah, I want you to, to email one of my friends, give him this information to, to contact this person, this person, this person. Great. And then they, then they said, okay, well, no problem. They said, do you want us to call anybody? I said, no, I don't want you to call anybody because you guys are kind of dicks. You know? <laughs> I don't want you, you didn't you're say talking. That. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> I said, what I, what I could use, though, I don't have any money. I, I, just know, I, I don't want to ask people for things. Yeah, it's not really cool. But you're my consulate. I paid my taxes. Um, not, not recently, but you know, I not, have. Not, not on know. that cocaine yeah, smuggling yeah, thing, that, but, but otherwise. No, I have. Um, my, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All I could, you know, I don't want you to contact people. I want to contact my family. Did you have to file them. taxes for your bakery income? <laughs> yeah. I think I do, actually. I have to work that out still. <laughs> so... I said, no, I want to contact them. Can you just help me out with a couple stamps and envelopes or something? And the consulate said, no, we don't have the budget for that. (laughs) (laughs) Budget budget for for stamps. For stamps. A couple stamps to email, to mail my my family. It's really, you know, you've got like 22 aircraft carriers, you know, (laughs) you don't have a budget for a couple stamps. Right. Well, that's how they afford the fucking aircraft carriers. Okay. Fuck the stamp guys. Mm. So I, you know, every time the consulate would come, I'd go back to, into the cell block. People would ask me, oh, what did what, 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 you get? What did the consulate bring you? What did they do for you in America? All right. I'm still yeah. waiting for the first phone call. Oh, yeah. I want to so, hear the tears in your mother's voice no, when I didn't, you finally I, pick up that phone out of the cradle. There's no phones. You never There's talked? no phones. There's no phones? No, there's no phones. Barbarians. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it really, but that, that's a big problem. All right. So, so did you get a visit? I did eventually. I had a friend of mine who lived in, in San Paulo. Um, she came to see me in the jail. But no one came, like no family? No, and I, I told them not to. All right. It's really hard to get out. It's just a pain yeah. in the ass, and there's no reason to. Yeah. You know, Plus, they'd have to sleep on the floor because they're new. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ma, it's politics. But the weird thing is, when you get a visit there, the visitor actually comes into your cell. They come into the jail. They spend a the whole day there in, in the jail. That's great. Yeah, we went to an Icelandic, uh, the only prison in Iceland, and we're hanging out in their dorms, and they have, but they got full internet. And I've heard this, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's fucking great. I was in a cell with a guy from Iceland. Oh, yeah? Actually. Yeah, he said, yeah, the prison in Iceland is like a hotel. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. Litla Hron? I can't fucking pronounce it. I can spell it, but I can't pronounce it. 
Uh, but yeah, that's. Uh, but so so your first visitor was a chick. Yeah. From Sao Paulo or she's are you American. Saying San Paulo. San that Paulo. A, yeah. Or that's how you it's pronounce kind of it. With an N, yeah. No, it's got a fucking O. Yeah, but these Brazil. people imprisoned you, man. Don't go with the <laughs> oh, this O is pronounced N bullshit. <laughs> Sao Paulo, yeah. Yeah, okay. So so the chick shows up, and you're trying to get fucking six guys to roll over the other way. <laughs> no, that's that's a big, big rule in the prison is when the visitor comes, you don't even look at them. You, know, you stay away. You get out of the cell. You make sure everything's cleaned up. Oh, the other guys. Yeah, the other I thought, guys. I thought yeah. you couldn't look at your own visitor. No, that would be weird. Yeah. <laughs> ass to ass. Ass to ass. <laughs> but... It's a big. It's a big rule. Big respect for any woman who comes in that prison right. and visits you. It sounds like it's run pretty well. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Self rule. Self rule. You know that that anarchy kind of thing. You see people kind of pull together and. So when she shows up, she says, "How is it? How are you holding up? Are you okay? How long before you stop the chit chat and you fuck her?" <laughs> like yeah yeah Actually, everything's fine the food's good okay just bend up wait, pull wait, up your skirt no no I'm good yeah no I got a toothbrush yeah my teeth are holding up <laughs> everything bend over <laughs> well, here's here's an interesting thing is that after you do two fifths of your time you can apply to get moved to half open jail which is right what I did um, and the half open jail is a place it's like a barracks. You're, it's like it's a little bunker that's built next to the prison, right. outside the walls, and you're supposed to go out and work in the community every day, but they don't actually do that in Brazil. Um, so that's where I, where I went after that. Now you have to be thinking escape every day that you're in the uh, half open jail. Right? Oh man, that's what everybody did. Yeah, um, they actually before I that got would be there. The fun part, just plotting escapes. Oh, How do we do that? Yeah, it, 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 in, in the half open jail, they didn't used to even have a fence. You could just walk away, and, and no problem. Everybody was doing that. So finally, they, they, they put, put up a fence, barbed wire across the top of it, and people would jump that fence all the time and run away. But the problem is, you're in this little small town, Itaí, which is a farming town. Yeah. You're like 200 miles away from, from anything. You're white. <laughs> yeah, you're white. You have no money. You know? <laughs> what are you, Torn no cotton ID. pants. <laughs> what are you, you going to do? You, know, you have to organize something, you know. Okay, so if you get caught escaping, they you, shoot you. You go back. They, they they don't shoot you actually. The guards have guns, but they don't they don't use All them. Right. They just they don't. Shoot they don't you. bring you out in the yard and execute you. No. On your knees in front of the other. No, in fact, they, in fact, the guards encourage you to escape. You know, it's, <laughs> it's it's so overcrowded. What are you doing here? Yeah. Get the fuck <laughs> get out, out of here, here will you? <laughs> there was one guy who actually who actually ran for it, climbed the fence and ran for it, and a guard was walking by, and he tripped and fell. <laughs> And the guard like kind of like kicked him like get out of here, <laughs> keep moving, Shoved run him. for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of great. Yeah. <laughs> Andy says Shawshank push start. <laughs> <laughs> we we, we should have had more mics for this. I just I, I just imagine like. The guard stand, fumbling for his like Barney Fife one bullet <laughs> <laughs> issued and like ah you know what I don't even just, know how to load the gun anyway just go just go <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh, you I I wouldn't like I'd be sitting there most of the time trying to figure out what two fifths is because I don't do math well yeah. but so you're there you get in a the half open housing yeah and that's when my girl came to to. All right. To, 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 to visit, so it's so kind of you a barracks thing. over the barbed wire. Yeah, it, it, that's a barracks kind of thing. Right. You can kind of close a curtain, but it's still all open. You just, no, it's not it's not a good place for, yeah. for being being. Yeah, romantic. <laughs> it's, it's just not the you right go, place. Baby, I just showered. That means you just shit. I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> and that was your only visit. Yeah, that's the only in visit. three three yeah. almost four years. Yeah. All right. But she came in. And the first thing she said was, "Wow, it's so clean." And I was like, "Oh yeah, that's a that's a big thing in the prison. You gotta keep shit clean. You know, it's every day you're cleaning stuff." Uh, As, okay, so now are you in and out of court this whole time, or have you been sentenced no. to a certain amount of time and that's it? That's it. Well, and your sentence was was five years, ten months. All right. And everybody appeals. It's just standard. Um, so I appealed, and my sentence actually went up to six years, two months. Um, which didn't matter because I was already in the half open. And then I appealed again, and that appeal is still outstanding. Still waiting for the results. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so 
It should go down. It now, should go, uh, like, uh, so. You're making this very happy, but what's, uh, w- like, tell us what sucked. Like, what's your lowest point? Oh, man, the lowest point. I, this is Were easy. you closer to killing yourself or escaping? You know, the, <laughs> the lowest point by far. There was a guy, when I went in my first cell, everybody's cool in my cell. Everybody's great, relaxed. There's one guy, this fat Bolivian fuck. He, by nature, he's a bully. But he's yep. got this high-pitched voice. He's just kind of fat and sloppy. He's just a jerk-off. High-pitched Eric. Yeah, he's, yeah. Blah, 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 he whines. and he, Just a crybaby. Just a piece of shit, this guy. And I hated him immediately. When it came to, like, oh, everybody's cool but that guy. And I actually sat him down. I said, look, you and I are going to have problems. <laughs> told him in Spanish. I mean, tell, look, we, For the listener, uh, Goose Kirk is not a very intimidating guy. No. <laughs> I'm a nerd. You know, I'm, a, I'm an IT guy. I'm a computer nerd. That's what I, you know. So... Skinny, I'm scrawny. I, if I had a name for this podcast, I'd say go to thatpodcast.com and look at pictures of Goose Kirk, but I don't even have a fucking title for this stupid thing. <laughs> go ahead. So, so you sat the Bolivian down. So I sat him down. So look, Do you remember you were, his name? Yeah, Eduardo. You never Eduardo. Re- forget a douchebag's yeah, name. forget this guy. So I sat forget Eduardo your first down. love before you forget a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> Especially this guy. I sat him down and said, look, you and I are going to have problems. Let's try to resolve this right now before it starts because I'm going to yell at you. At some point, <laughs> at some point, I can already see I'm going to yell at you and just try not to take it seriously. I, I just, let's just try to be cool. And he, he said all the right things. Yeah, we have to respect each other, blah, blah, blah. It's great. And like two days later. So was, even the douchebags talk out their problems? Is there any violence oh, yeah. in this place? There's a little bit, but, and it does happen, but very rare. All um, right. So you didn't get in any fights? I, I didn't wasn't get fights. raped. No, no, no rapes. <laughs> Impromptu no. soccer against <laughs> the guards. <laughs> so you're really good at this game, Goose Cook. We want you to take a dive. <laughs> I sat him down. I said, "You don't got any problem." And like two days later, he was crying about something stupid, and I was like, "You know what? Shut up! You're just crying. And just knock it off." And, and was this prison or meatballs? Yeah, really, really. And, and we would, we would talk about that. We'd say this isn't a prison. This is a girls' school. These people crying and bitching. Oh, there's no violence. What? What is this? You know, like, there's, no, yeah, there's no crying in prison. So, anyway, so like a year later, I changed cells and I changed cells to this really great cell. All my friends are in this cell. Everybody reads. There's tons of books. It's great. Except Eduardo's in that cell, and Eduardo's like the only person like voted against me coming in the cell. You like you have to everybody has to vote, and it has to be unanimous. Cause Democracy be, now. Yeah, and Eduardo's the only person who voted against me coming in the cell. But everybody looked at him and said, "You know, Eduardo, we've kicked you out of the cell twice because you're a douche, and we felt bad for you because nobody else would take you in their cell, so we let you stay. So your vote doesn't count. Shut up. You know." How many people are in the barracks now? Like, um, how, how many people are... are, are well, the, the, this is in the main jail I'm talking oh, about. Oh, this is the main jail. Yeah, okay, the, sorry. Um, so, so I'm in the cell with Eduardo, and Eduardo is great because he's terrified of me. It's awesome. Like, he won't... Like, if, if I'm standing in the cell and I'm in the way, he won't I even... I guess you could be terrifying in a Nosferatu kind of way. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> like, if, you, if I woke up and you were looming over my bed, <laughs> backlit... <laughs> That's the only. Way. That's all I got. Yeah, I just you know, hands. middle of the night. Uh, so, so, but he is, he's genuinely terrified of me. He won't say boo to me, and it's great. If, if I'm standing in the way, he won't even ask me to move. He'll just like, stand there and wait for me to move on my own. It's just fantastic. And the guy's such a douche. And it's one night, you know, ten guys in the cell. All right. Okay. People are going to jerk off. That's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Of course. You know. Um, but I sleep with earplugs every night. I put the earplugs in. I don't, I don't block everything out. And, and yeah, and your eye mask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your nightcap. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Aromatherapy candle, says Greg Chaley. <laughs> if I could have, I would have got those. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a clapper light? You got a good one, Andy. Just grab the mic and then put it back. <laughs> Sit over here. <laughs> so I got the earplugs in. One night, I wake up in the middle of the night. I don't who knows what time it is. There's no clocks. So I wake up, and my ear is kind of hurting me. So I take out the earplugs, 
And when I take out the earplugs, I can hear across from me on the opposite bed, Eduardo's jerking off. I'm like, oh, this is just this is the lowest point of my life. This is <laughs> God damn. I gotta. L- so I go to put the earplugs back in, and then I realize, no, he's finishing. <laughs> so I just leave that. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> my life sucks. Uh, so that then, was your lowest moment. No, no, in no. Four wait, wait, years wait, in wait, a wait, third wait. world prison. Wait, this gets better. Wait. wait. Okay. So I got I just. I, he's finishing. Great. I'll just try to block this out. And then I hear this noise that I can't say what it was. I don't know what it was, but I hear this wet lip smacking kind of sound. Like Eduardo's eating something. He's, uh, <laughs> you know he's not sucking his own dick if he's fat. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just uh, like, oh, God, what has my life come to? I'm listening to Eduardo eat his own jizz. You know? <laughs> what my- I think they call that a prison power boost. <laughs> that's, a, that's a protein shake. That's a five-hour energy. <laughs> and so... The next day, I had to tell one of the guys. I had to tell somebody, like, if I had to hear this, you got to hear this, you know. Like, <laughs> and, and I'm telling this guy, and Eduardo comes walking by us, and the guy looks over at Eduardo and goes, "Yeah, well, nothing goes to waste with that guy." <laughs> <laughs> and then a few weeks later, Eduardo's complaining he's, he's got a, a sore throat. <laughs> Go figure, right? So he's complaining he's got a sore throat. And one of the you guys. You gave who, yourself HPV yeah. <laughs> in your own throat. Eduardo. <laughs> so, hang on one second. We just, we just had an interloper. It looked, uh, was that, uh, what's that guy's name with the fucking, did the fake documentary about himself? That horrible actor with the cleft palate. He looked like that guy. Uh, Joaquin. Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, yeah was. If I could have had the reference, I'd have had a great joke right there. <laughs> what did Joaquin Phoenix want, I would have said, and everyone would have laughed, but I didn't know his name. He just wanted to know if this was live. Oh, he wanted, <laughs> he's going to go tune in on his AM radio? <laughs> <laughs> he's been sitting out there in the fucking... Anyway, all right. Let's, uh, let, okay, so let's get to the end of prison, unless you have some yeah. other s- fucking great stories of no, shit what, that happened. What I love with, 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 with that... <clears throat> no rape. There's no, no rape. rape. There's wait, no wait, rape. Hold on a second. Joaquin Phoenix... Wanted to find out if it was live. He was watching it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah it was. It's live for <laughs> it's you. Live. <laughs> Why would he go sit in his car and listen? <laughs> it's too live. <laughs> no, but the, 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 end, the end of that Eduardo story is that he's complaining he's got a sore throat, and one of the guys in the cell says, Oh, hey, Eduardo. I've got some, some, some special cream for that. Just come in the bathroom with me. I'll g- g- give it to you. It's just a joke, you know. And Eduardo says, no, no thanks. I've got my own cream. <laughs> like, I'm like, yes, you do. <laughs> Suicides? Uh, there was, Dead people? I think there was one guy who killed himself, actually. But just through the grapevine. The Polish guy. He was in, he was in some right. other, other... There was no lock. love scene with John Hurt? Oh, <laughs> man. All my Midnight Express references are going nowhere, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, no rape. No, no rape. Um, the guys were actually very anti-gay in that. In that there, actually, there were there were three cells or two cells in this, this, this other block that were especially gay. If you're gay, you have to go in these cells. And even the food that comes comes in these plastic tubs, and the gay people have their own tubs, like marked with like a pink string. You know, like, <laughs> they, they won't even share their food. You know, the pink, you know, they're just scared of AIDS. You know, the gay people will get them AIDS. Um, All right. So, so uh, when do you find out you're getting out? Th- uh, in Brazil, you never know. Well, when did you, when did you know? know. Um, like one day, they're like, pack your shit, you're out of here? That's what happens, yeah. Technically, I, I was eligible to leave in January last year. I left in November. That's how long it just takes. You just randomly, they just pick you, uh, just a name out of a hat. Like you, you go. Now. Wait, you, you were set to leave in January, right? But you were sentenced to six years. Well, that's the you do two fifths, and then you do what's this time? All right, and you so get out, blah, blah, blah. okay, with good yeah. behavior, all that yeah, shit, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So, so you were supposed to be out in January, yeah. and you're like, can and, I go? No. And, the next day, can I go? Yeah, exactly. For, that's for t- what, ten months. Yeah, for ten months. Right. Every day, I think I could go today right. know, and, and that's what everybody thinks you so the day know. that so, you do leave so the day what are you doing the day I, I was at work I was making bags shopping bags like these 
Is the kind you were going to export before you got into yeah, this Yeah, kind of like shit. that. Yeah, I was like, oh, Jesus. You know, really? Bags? You know? So right. I was making bags, and the guard called me over. He says, you have to go back into the barracks, sir. And I said, really? You know, like, you're fucking with me. Like, because there's no reason to get called back to the barracks out of work, you know, like, unless you're going free. And I'm like, no. After 10 months of yeah. waiting every day, it could be my day, you know. Yeah. And I went back to the barracks, and the guard's like, yeah, pack your things. You've got, like, half hour, you know. Pack your shit up, say goodbye to everybody, and then get out of here. And, cool. And they put did you on you a bus. Did you say goodbye to people, or did you go, fuck them, I'm out? No, I said goodbye to everybody. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah nice you're going to do a there. victory lap. But, like, woo, in your face, bitches. <laughs> I'm out of here. I'm out. You staying. <laughs> <laughs> you staying. I'm going. I'm going. But, you know, another interesting thing was I was allowed to go out on a, on a holiday because I had a visitor. Um, I was allowed to go out for a week over... Christmas. So wait, yeah. this is before the January where yeah. you were up to be released. Right. You were let out for a week on vacation. Yeah, <gasps> these I'm are vacation. the worst prison stories yeah. ever. Yeah, I, had, I wanted sodomy. Yeah, I wanted, you wanted shanking. Rape, you know, shanking. Do, doesn't it make you wonder about the locked up abroads we've been watching? Right. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm waiting for that shoe to drop. It's like, yeah, and there's, then there's... then walked in the warden. <laughs> <laughs> So you're on but, vacation. But no, okay, let's yeah. get back to this terrifying prison ordeal that I've Horrible. been waiting years to hear. I'm scarred. Now you're at the beach yeah. before your release <laughs> with your gal. Yeah. <laughs> I'm scarred for life. No. What was your per diem? <laughs> You know, when you go out for a holiday, the, the prison actually rents like a bus. Now, you have to pay for it. You have to have the money to pay for it. You're a seat. But Is it a two-decker with a top, no roof on the, yeah, the upper know, deck? Yeah, sightseeing bus. Yeah. <laughs> imagine that one uh, in Memphis, that one uh, St. Patrick's Day bus with everyone painted painted green, <laughs> big foam fingers and hats. Yeah. And downstairs is discos and stuff. <laughs> All right. Now, here's, here's the great part of this. So they let me out for Christmas. I go on the bus. And there's like 30 guys on the bus. Not five minutes after we leave the prison, guys are pulling out blow and weed and they're smoking up and the, the bus driver doesn't give a shit, you know? <laughs> just like, hey, you want this? Like, it's okay. like the green room at Dante's. Yeah, he's like, yeah but better. Yeah, yeah. He's like, good shit, you know? So, <laughs> so I'm like, I, I didn't know. I don't really use much Mike. Drugs, really. So, so <laughs> you don't use so here, drugs, really? Not, not so much. Really. Unbelievable. Yeah, really. I, the guy doesn't even like Coke. I don't, really. No, that's but, right. for, for He's business, a businessman. Yeah, business. So, I'm like, you know, these are guys who've spent the last two, three years in prison for having drugs. And they've just walked out of your prison with drugs. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? Like, what, what is this all about? Wait, they took drugs out of They've had drugs in the prison? Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. drugs were commonplace. Commonplace, yeah. All right. Yeah. But, they, but just the fact that they're put there for drugs... And they've walked out with drugs. Fantastic. Like, what what that are is you? fucking fantastic. What is the point of this? <laughs> All right. So when you're on vacation from prison, where do you go? Hotel. All right. San Paulo, just uh, hanging out. And Catch then, up on. And you had no thought of, why well, I, I could probably. Oh, my God. That's what everybody does. Everybody leaves. That, that's a normal thing you do. Yeah. But my girl who was living there, I was signed out like under her name. Oh, we weren't right. sure if it would cause her problems or not, so I had to go back. And I thought, well, I'm leaving in January anyway. Chivalry? Yeah. I only got like one you more month to You still talk to her? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. You going to marry her, get her in the country? <laughs> no. Well, we can't say that. She's American, so. It's she's right. American? Yeah, yeah. Oh, living down there. Mm -hmm. All right. So to why didn't prison. you have a fucking place to stay when you get out? She I, dumped you. She she didn't really want an ex-con living with her. Really. It's, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I, it was no longer hot when he got out. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun for a weekend. <laughs> but yeah, not really. That's the only way he, she could get on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> she needed a ride. It's all the good drugs. <laughs> so you have your holiday. Then you get out. They say, pack your shit. You have 30 minutes. You say goodbye to people. Yep. They, they give you a bus ticket? No. Nothing? No, you got to buy, you you buy your own ticket, man. Yeah, oh, you, but you had enough money to buy it. I had it. enough money to buy a ticket, right. yeah. All right. Yeah, and then, so you go to Sao Paulo. Yep. You got no money. You got nowhere to go. You're like, what, what the fuck am I doing now? And so I, I had to call up my friends who had already left jail earlier. All right. You know, and so 
ended up in like in a hostel kind of thing, uh, which was just like jail. <laughs> <laughs> the same people, like the same the guys. Same guys. You know, like, <laughs> only now around yeah. the street, we have to pay for our own food. That's the only difference, right. you know. Um, and the, the, there was a long period of time between when you got out and when you got here. Because yeah. you didn't have a passport. I had to get the passport first, and then I had to be very careful about how I left Brazil. So actually, I am right now, I'm, I'm a fugitive from justice. In, in, oh, in you Brazil. can't go to World Cup. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's over. <laughs> or is that Argentina? No, it's Brazil, yeah, yeah. Wow, you're going to miss so many exciting, scoreless games. <laughs> so how did you leave? What I had to do is I had to, to leave Brazil without... Getting a stamp in my passports. So I had to kind of sneak out. Um, As we come to a conclusion, yeah. fucking Portland, love it. <laughs> fucking, <laughs> fucking Joaquin Phoenix, fucking pushing his head into the camera that doesn't exist. <laughs> fucking photobombing a fucking a podcast. Better than that, he asked me to take a picture of him, and I said, oh, where's okay. the camera? And he goes, well, you'll just email it to me. You'll take it with your camera. I love it. All right. All right. Let's wrap. The, yeah. the, we're building. We got to yeah, the got fucking to peak of the mountain. Yeah. And I had to escape to Uruguay and then fly Wait, back home. Escape. Yeah. So you just got caught a commercial flight. Yeah. Well, I had to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm an escaped convict yeah. who just yeah. rode a bus. Oh, he had to escape in coach. Yeah, in coach. Middle seat. Jesus. It was <laughs> horrible. The horror. So the horror. I'm traumatized by the whole thing. Um, so I had, to, I had to go to Uruguay, cross the border without getting a stamp, uh, which wasn't so hard. Now, but, on a flight? But no, on, on, a, on bus? a bus. Yeah. All right. I had to go to the border, walk over the border, yeah. kind of. <laughs> kind of being quiet about it. <laughs> kind of sneak Got down on your knees, kissed Mother Earth. Yeah. Went, well, I'm not really home. It's Uruguay. This it, might be worse. It, it, Uruguay is actually a great place. It's very, it's beautiful. Um, but then I had to leave Uruguay without a stamp in my passport. I had this brand new passport with no stamps in it at all. This is the most exciting um, part of the story. Yeah. Now, now your heart's racing. Yeah. I got to get out of Uruguay. I got to get out of without Uruguay. Without a stamp. Without a stamp. <laughs> But but Uruguay was really concerned about that. They they asked me questions. Well, how did you get to Uruguay? Why are you here? How long have you been here? Like, I was on spring break. Yeah, I, I was drunk. I woke up here. <laughs> now I'm 38 years old. Yeah, I, that, that, that's happened to you, I'm sure. Yeah, you know. So I still so, have my big souvenir hurricane cup. <laughs> Look, <laughs> the, the the beautiful part was everybody in Uruguay speaks English in the airport anyway. But the, the, the immigration girl didn't speak any English at all. So I just act like I don't speak Spanish. So I just batted I, I, those fucking I don't know what crystal I was, blue eyes at her. I, I was yeah, I was uh, I don't know what I was doing. I, I just came into Uruguay. I don't know. What, I forgot. I, I forgot, yeah. I just, <laughs> and I had to pay a fine and then I flew home and I I was waiting all these years in prison I was expecting like I was thinking like I should probably fly to Vancouver and then like just drive down because I'm sure somebody's going to be waiting for me at the airport. The American government just is, is so scary. You know? Yeah, somebody's going to be waiting for me at the airport, like DEA or somebody. Yeah, no, be it's there, definitely like, yeah. scarier yeah. Hey. here than most places. Yeah, I flew back to America into Las Vegas because I've been gone for like nine years yeah. out of America. If I'm going back to America, I'm going to go back into the capital, you know, first, which is Las Vegas. <laughs> Vegas. I think we all yeah. know. Yeah. Nobody said a word. They're just like, oh. Christopher Kirk, welcome back. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I mean, really? <laughs> and what's the first thing you did when you go back? Oh, man. Ate. I just ate. Tell me it was something oh. awful like McDonald's. No, I went to Denny's because it was the worst uh, thing I could think of. That's, I mean, yeah, that's, uh, that's right I'm up in, there. I'm in Vegas. I'm staying at the Hooters Hotel. Like, just the most <laughs> American thing. Like, just, yeah, I'm the I've, full American. We've stayed at the Hooters Hotel. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's great. It's just Hung out with Geechee Guy. Yeah. <laughs> he brought us to his suite. Didn't like, try to do anything inappropriate. I'm, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm in Vegas, staying at Hooters. I want to go to Denny's. This is fucking pure America, baby. You know, like. <laughs> Don't know what you got till it's gone. <laughs> We're glad to have you back, sir. Thanks. Yep. We're going to yeah. fucking Cheers. break, maybe get something to eat. And then we're going to talk to Binger's sister. But that'll be another episode. 
Thanks for listening to this untitled uh, shit we record. Hopefully, this will be the first one we put out. Ghost Kirk! Ghost. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah. Play the Matoid! Part the time.